Hello and welcome to On Charge, where we're going behind the scenes at Envision Virgin Racing, helping you get to know their drivers a little bit better. We've got Robin Freitz, who we met last year, but we've got a new man this year. Nick Cassidy is uh, joining the team. Nick, welcome to Envision. You must be happy to be here. Yeah, over the moon. Um, thank you, mate. Yeah. It's nice to be here. Nice to get started and uh, looking forward to the season. So give us a little bit of background about yourself because you, um, we see a lot of Formula One drivers, you know, big names come and join the championship, but you're very much sort of a, a young rising star. Um, hopefully still rising, mate. Yeah, yeah for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, look, I, I grew up in New Zealand, uh, racing karts, a bit of motorsport back home, getting into cars, 13, 14 years old. I came to Europe, um, did some Formula Renault, Formula 3, and basically I had a, a really good weekend at Macau with um, actually my engineer this year, Laney, and, and that gave me the opportunity to go race in Japan. So I've been in Japan racing for the last six years with Toyota, and uh, now for the next chapter in Formula 3. How did it come about, you sort of turning professional? I didn't have the budget to, to run a full season in Europe, but at the same time, I've been really lucky to have some great opportunities and some, some great backing from um, when I raced in, in Macau, that was with Three Bond and the guys at T-Sport. They supported me a lot. Um, then with, with Toyota, to get that chance was, was huge. And so that backed my career from being a, a young guy in Formula 3 and, and turned me into a professional racing driver. And um, yeah, I mean, I can't complain about the, the fact that I've not had huge backing because at the same time I've had a lot of great opportunities. So take us back to New Zealand and you're racing there and you're doing Formula Ford, you're doing the Toyota Racing Series and the most yeah. successful man ever in Toyota Racing Series. Big and, words, yeah, huh? I know, big exactly. words. <laughs> what, what is the, how does that decision come about that then to, right, moving to Europe? Because that's a, well, surely a big step to take. Yeah, I mean, you always dream as a young kid to, to make that move to Europe, right? And so it was through the Twitter Racing Series that I got that chance. They had a, a prize as the, the winner of the Rookie Championship to test and form the winner. And that test happened and, and kind of helps me kind of get my name over here mm. and, and get a ride in Formula Renault where I could. Um, I had a few people who had helped out along the way and it wasn't, I think, the most successful time of my career for sure. There'd be things uh, from when I was younger I wish I'd done differently, but we're all a bit like that. And a few years later, it all started to, to go a lot better. Was it a, I mean, must be more of a culture shock, I suppose, moving to Japan, but coming yeah, over to yeah. Europe, was that, was that quite a big a change from, from yeah, New Zealand? Yes, still a, a culture shock. Um, I mean, first time away from home, fairly young. Um, that wasn't too much of an issue for me because I was always wanting to, to go race overseas, right? I was wanting to follow my dream. Yeah. So that was okay, but for sure, you, you're always learning to work with um, new people, new cultures, and uh, it was part of the learning process for sure. Was there a point where you, that you can pinpoint and you go, oh, actually, I'm quite good at this driving stuff. You know, is, did it come when you were karting? Or did it come when you set I'm up still waiting for yeah. that point, mate. <laughs> 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 nah, um, oh, T TRS, I think, is, I, w I wouldn't say it's that point where you think, oh, I'm, I'm going to make it, but at least it was a perfect championship for giving me the chance to race guys who were quite successful in Europe. Mm. And so... Um, Alex Lynn, uh, Mitch Evans, Danny Kvyat, um, a few guys in that era, 2011, 2012, when I did TRS, we were ra racing against each other in, in the championship and then they were going well in Europe. So that, that gave me a lot of hope for sure. Yeah, fascinating. And then tell us about moving to Japan. Because again, that's, that's got to be another big, a big part. You've, you've done a lot in your, in your quite a few years. Yeah, the last few years have been pretty full on. Um, so, you know, moving there, I was living close to the, the workshop in uh, Gotemba, which is about an hour and a half out of Tokyo. I didn't know much about Japan at all, but I was loving it. It was my first, um, believe it or not, the Japanese Formula 3 Championship was the first full season I'd done outside of New Zealand. Wow. So, yeah, I'd done, you know, obviously a fair bit of racing in Europe, but never a full championship. And to have that chance was mega. Really enjoyed it, and then um, the following year was was taken on the Super GT team with Tom's, um, which at that stage was a fairly big step. Um, 
took a bit to get going, but as well uh, during that season, I was combining it with European Formula 3, running it over here with Prema, and that was kind of my first full year in Europe. I really wanted to do that for that experience of doing a full European championship, but um, could also learn to manage new things, a lot of travel, a lot of, uh, you know, different calendars and things. And so to have that early on was quite good. 2017 then fully settled in Japan, doing Super Formula and Super GT. And um, I think from that moment is when things started to come together properly for me. That season in European Formula 3, you were up against some, some tough drivers there. What did you finish, third in the...? I finished fourth. Fourth. Um, obviously, yeah, Lance Stroll, Gunther, Max, um, George Russell. It, it, was, it was a great season. And uh, the thing that probably looking back on it, though, for me, it wasn't my focus because I was in my first year being a professional in, in Japan with Super GT. It, that was a huge for me. You know, as a Toyota driver, um, it was where my focus was. And I wouldn't say I was coming to Europe for fun, but I was against these guys who probably had a bit more drive and a bit more, yeah, focus on that championship than me at that point. So as, as well as it went, probably looking back at it, that's a bit of a regret for me that I didn't put a bit more effort in and I didn't um, use that opportunity a bit more, but it still went quite well. And, and I could use that experience to tune myself up a bit for the future and, and make sure from that point, point on, everything I did, I, I wanted to do and I wanted to do it well. Yeah, that must be difficult to look back on a championship because like you say, for your, for your Russells and your, and your Strolls, that's all that they would have been doing yeah. that year. Yeah. And every single thing they did in that whole year would have been focused on that European F3 championship. But I guess it must be tough to have the regrets, but also you wouldn't give up all of the stuff you've been doing in Japan, I oh, presume. 100%. And I'm probably talking about it in a bit of a negative way because I yeah. still finished fourth in the championship. Yeah, I still, yeah. you know, won a race and, and I think I had 10 podiums. So, like, it was still a good year. But being hard on myself, that's, that's something that I'll look back on, yeah. And would you say last year has been your most successful in your career? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, last couple have been good. Uh, 2018, I finished second in both the championships in Japan. And I, I mean, I was six tenths away, less than a second from winning, winning one. And I was, I think, 1.2 seconds away from winning the other, both in the final race. And so that really hurt come Christmas time, you yeah. know, it's, uh, that, that sucks. So to be able to come out the following year and at least pick one title back up was, um, was awesome. When did your Formula E journey begin? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good point. So, end of, end of last year, after the Super Formula Championship, I was very fortunate to be put in touch with the team here at Envision Virgin Racing. And initially, we were just talking about the, the test at Marrakesh, right? And for me, it was um, obviously a championship we've all been watching for a fair while. Maybe yourself more than me, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of it. <laughs> but... Uh, at that stage, it was certainly a championship I wanted to have the experience of, and, and we never would really know what's going to happen in the future. And um, it led to doing the, the tests at Marrakesh. That went really well and uh, led to a race drive probably sooner than I expected. So that was very, very cool. Because you raced already for Virgin in the Race at Home oh, yeah. Challenge. Yeah. Well, a podium, wasn't it? It was, mate. Yeah, that was good. That yeah. was good. Yeah. Did you do did, fun on our factor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you into your sim racing esports much, or um, was, I was that all out of nowhere? I was it, when I was younger a bit. So I'd done, I must say, a fair bit, you know, 2008 to probably 2011, mm. 2012. But I've been off it for a few years. And then um, I rented a simulator for those two months. And mm. so those two months got back into it, probably along with everyone, everyone else, and uh, haven't been on since. So, yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> so what were you doing back in 2008 to 11 then? What were you... So there was a, there was a group of us, because it was um, Scott McLaughlin yeah. and Shane Van Gisbergen and okay. a few guys down in New Zealand. We're all jumping online and racing oh, with each cool. other. So we're having a bit of fun back then, yeah. Thoughts for this season then? Looking ahead to, to season seven, are you... You've, you've done so many new things in your relatively short career. It's almost not that... It's still Alien, new though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, but you, do, are you able to sort of manage expectations coming into a season or are you here to um, be champion or, you know, it's no, the look, impossible I, question. Yeah, it's an impossible question. I want to manage expectations, but at the same time, I want to do my best and, and get the best 
I, I can get. Um, how about we switch the question around? Okay. What are your expectations, mate? I think I'm just going to shout at the cars. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. That's why I'm looking Not forward to a good season of full shouting the all cars. the time. No, yeah, exactly. No, I need to <laughs> dial it down a little bit. But it depends what you're doing on track, I suppose, doesn't it? Um, but what, uh, how, what's the. What's the not main concern, but the, the, the biggest focus that you're putting in on. Because I presume yeah. that one lap pace, you're pretty comfortable that you're a quick racing yeah. driver. I think but what is it about the whole package? Yeah, from what I can judge so far, I think everyone's quite comfortable on one lap. Mm. And in the end, qualifying's close. You know, but a lot of the drivers probably have a lot of confidence in that area. And I'm, I'm the same. I've not done much in the car yet, um, only a couple of days. But certainly on one lap, I feel really comfortable. Uh, however, the race is, I think, um, I can't really buy experience right now. Every, every lap is going to be important, every race is going to be important, and uh, I hope that I can make the most of it um, as quickly as possible. Do you, uh, do you watch the races and try and learn how, because they, some of the drivers talk about the jungle in the, in the middle it's of the, the jungle. pack. It's just okay. in the middle <laughs> of the pack. It's from like 8th <laughs> to 16th, yeah, you're yeah. in the jungle. And is that something that you're aware you that you're going to have to be aggressive in, or that because uh, presumably there's, you know, obviously in single seaters in Super Formula you're not banging wheels ideally. Is there? I do, a, I do Super GT. So yeah, well punching. that's the thing. Yeah, so yeah. is there a bit more of that in Super GT? Yeah, there is a little bit. Um, at, at the same time, it, it's it's racing, so I'm expecting that, and obviously I can watch the TV like like everyone else, and you see a bit of that goes on, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy when we go testing on the sim to do a, a race run and you, you feel fine and can match targets and things. Whereas obviously now adapting that to the, like you say, the jungle is going to be the, the interesting part. Yeah, that's, that's always, I think, one of the most interesting things for me with Effie is just like you say, you do it in the sim and you'd save however much you've got to save per lap and there you go. But when yeah. you're trying to make positions as well, that's, yeah. where it, that's where it gets tough. Do you have experience of that at all? Is there sort of management in Super GT or Super Formula or anything? Um, or? I wouldn't say a huge amount. Yeah, mm. For sure, it's going to be something new for me. I, I'm lucky that a few Super Formula races we've done have been um, quite fuel critical, okay. you, you know, doing a, a pit stop for fuel or, or not and having to save. And so I've had a couple of them under my belt, which probably is the closest yeah. experience so far to that, yeah. Robin. Who? Robin, he's your teammate. Okay. He's a little Last guy, name? getting old. <laughs> Last name, I have no idea. <laughs> Do you know? Can you say it? I s yeah, I don't know who we're talking he about. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, honestly, he says his surname different every time to me. Okay. I swear, because I thought I'd nailed it, and he's like, you're saying it wrong. And it's like, well, that's how you taught me to, anyway. But um, how, how, how are you finding him so far no, as, I, a, as a teammate? Because he, he claims to be a straightforward guy. Oh, it's, if as long as what he claims to be is true, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, I, I think I get on with him really good. Um, he's a good laugh, and so far I can learn a lot from him. Obviously, he's got a huge amount of talent and experience, and so, um, yeah, pretty happy to be in the, the car alongside him. And you mentioned Stephen Lane. We've heard his voice so often over the last couple of years talking to Sam. And he was Eyes your forward, yeah. Huh? Eyes forward, Eyes yeah. forward, exactly. Yeah. Have you, is he going to say that to you? Have you discussed I think, this? I or? think we're in discussions for a, okay. a new... Sam hasn't yeah. trademarked it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Have you got any suggestions? Um, no, but I'll have a... I'll, yeah, no, I'll have a think, actually. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. <laughs> that'd be quite cool. But uh, so you, you work with him in Macau. Yeah. Is that, is that the only time you worked with him, or did you do a bit more? Yeah, just, just Macau. Oh, really? Um, but... It, it went well, so I hope, it, hope that continues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Um, great. Well, thank you very much. for. Oh, number 37. That's right. Number 37. Any, is there a reason? Because some driver, you ask some drivers and they tell you this great story behind the number. You ask others, they go, I think it was Jerome D'Ambrosio. I said, why number 64? Okay. He, 60. he just went, I don't know. Look cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, great. Well, it's not really, it's 37 got anything? Um, yeah, it's, it's been my number in Japan and... Uh, the championships have won out there have been with 37, so I thought I'd stick with that. Yeah, okay, nice. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Best of luck for the season. And Cheers, join mate. us throughout the year where you'll hear more from Nick and his teammate Robin, insert surname here, and uh, keep up to date with everything on the Envision Virgin Racing social channels.